Welcome to Electron Online and now we're going to look at the diffraction pattern of a circular aperture. Now in most optics and including the human eye, the aperture is usually circular in shape. The pupils of our eyes are circular and most of the time when we have telescopes or we have microscopes or we have uh, cameras, they all have circular apertures. And so therefore the diffraction grading for those apertures look very different. And here's an example. Let's say we shine some light of a particular wavelength through a very small opening. This is the aperture. Big D represents the diameter of that aperture. Let uh, L represent the distance from the, from the aperture, from the opening to the screen. And what happens on the screen is you'll get max and mins, but instead of having them linear, they're going to be circular max and mins. Notice we have the central maximum right there, which is called the airy disk. Then we have a minimum region around it where no light is seen because therefore that because of the way the light goes in there will be what we call destructive interference from some parts of the beam going through the aperture such a way that when they reach that portion of the screen there will be a half a wavelength out of phase and therefore they will destructively interfere with each other and so we get this what we call circular pattern of bright regions and dark regions. Dark regions is where we have destructive interference. The bright regions is where we have constructive interference. Now the mathematics behind coming up with those patterns are very complicated. They involve Bessel functions. In the next video I'll show you kind of how that's done. But here the result of that is that the location, the angle, with respect to the line directly across the center of the central maximum right here, the error disk, the angle, call it theta 1 to the first minimum, theta 2 to the second minimum, theta 3 to the third minimum, so forth. From that we can actually find the angles with this relationship. We know that the sine of the first angle to the first minimum right there is equal to 1.22 times the wavelength divided by the diameter of the aperture. For the second minimum right there, the sine of that angle is equal to 2.23 times the wavelength divided by d and the sine of the third angle theta sub 3 is 3.24 lambda divided by d and the re where these come from is from the solutions of the Bessel function that describes those particular patterns. The maxima can be found, now of course we have the central maximum, but the center of the first maximum beyond the area disk can be found by taking the angle, sine of the angle equal to 1.63 lambda over d for the center of the second maximum, it would be 2.68 lambda divided by d. And for the third maximum, it would be sine of theta equals 3.7 times lambda divided by d. Now, how do we get the resolution angle from that, or the ability to resolve things? Well, whenever we see something at a large distance, the angle between them becomes very, very small. The smaller the angle, the more difficult it becomes to resolve the two because what happens is the diffraction patterns begin to merge for objects that are very far away and very close together. And at some point they come together so much that we can no longer resolve them as two separate items. For example, mountains in the distance, when you have two peaks side by side and they're far enough away, they'll begin to merge into a single peak. Or for example, the headlights of a car far away Initially, when the car is far enough away, the two headlights appear as if it's one light, and as the car comes closer together, you begin to see two separate lights. That all has to do with the resolution of our capability of to resolve two objects that are close together. So what happens is, in order for us to be able to resolve two objects side by side, you want the airy disks to be far enough apart from one another. So when they're like this, we have no problems to resolve them. When they get closer together, it becomes more and more difficult. There's an ultimate limit from which we can no longer resolve. If it gets any closer than that, we can no longer resolve the two objects. And that happens when the two air disks overlap in such a way that the distance from one center to the distance of the other center, when that distance becomes half the diameter of either one of the air disks, at that point, any closer to that, we can no longer resolve the two objects. And so the angle of resolution is such that they cannot get any closer than half the diameter of these, um, of these area disks. Now, when we think about it, if the angle theta sub 1 is the distance from the point at the very center to the edge, then that would be half the diameter of the area disk, so that would be equal to... Um, that would be equal to one of these angles right here. That would be equal to theta sub 1. So that means that the limit of resolution, the limit of resolution is such 
that the angle theta must be greater than or equal to theta sub 1 because that represents half the angular size of the central maximum. Notice that it's the distance, is the angle from the point to the very center to the first minimum, that would be half the diameter and that would then be the limit of resolution. If, it, if it's less than theta sub 1, we can no longer resolve it. If it's greater, we can resolve it. So that's the basics. So now we're going to go ahead and start utilizing these equations to show you how to actually calculate the angle of resolution to see what kind of objects we can actually see and resolve and what kind of objects we can no longer resolve. It's not just the difference or the separation angle between two objects. It can simply be the size of a small object. For example, if a small object, like let's say a human hair, can we see a human hair, a hair laying on the ground? Well, that depends upon the angle subtended from the two sides of that hair. If that angle is smaller than theta sub 1, we cannot see it. If the angle is bigger than theta sub 1, we can see it. Of course, provided there's enough lighting and we have good vision and so forth. If we don't have bad vision, maybe we need glasses. But as long as the conditions are correct, we're going to be able to resolve or be able to distinguish or see items as long as that angle of resolution is smaller than the angle subtended by the object we're looking at or the angle subtended by two objects, the separation of two objects. And that's the whole idea behind the, in the resolution of objects due to the diffraction patterns of circular apertures. So there's the introduction. If you're still interested, we have several more videos that show you how to actually do all this. Stay tuned.